Hello, welcome back to All for United WSC. First fan review of the season. It's uh, finally we can talk about a game that's not that preseason didn't matter, but a game of significance in the WSL. And it's a 4 0 win. It was a record crowd. Debut goals, debut debutants came on as well. Good atmosphere, good, good everything, really, wasn't it? It was just a good feeling around the game. So, firstly, let's check in on how the fantastic panel are doing. How is everyone doing today? Very good, yeah. Silence. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I thought I'd already started. Yeah, no, good, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. Nice one. We are all obviously aware that the uh, the Chelsea-Liverpool game is currently into the last kind of 15 minutes. I'm sure one of the panellists will keep us updated as to how that's going. Currently one all, so we're, we're still... Are we top of the league or not? We're joint with Arsenal, aren't we? So, uh... Yeah, I think Arsenal just about there because of the fact that we're going to aim. <sighs> Alphabetical order. Yeah, well... We'll eclipse them by the end of the season anyway. Make sure you get your comments, and I want to hear what you guys thought on the game yesterday um, and just anything between as we go through over the next hour or so. Um, I want to start with attendance, though, before we get into the game itself. Now, obviously, <clears throat> there was the tweet that went around. We all, were all in the stadium looking at it going, oh, 7,200 so, or whatever it was. I think I've got the exact number in front of me, actually. 7,217 was the figure that was tweeted. Then it obviously came out the announcement, 5,350. Obviously, a bit of a difference, um, but still a club record um, at LSV as well. So, how was everyone kind of feeling? I guess Charlie, I'll come to you first. And that you know, record crowd. Did it feel like that to you? Do you feel like the atmosphere was was louder than normal? And how did you kind of think about all of that? Um, yeah, I thought it was good. I thought it was a I thought it was a much improved atmosphere. It was nice. You could hear um, other areas of the crowd trying to get chants going, which was really nice. And then us sort of picking up on that and following through with it. It, it felt it felt nice. It felt I kept thinking I wish it was on on telly properly because it would have looked really good. It would have looked brilliant um, because apart from the bit behind behind one of the goals where the flags are, it, it looks pretty full all around, which which I think is really important. And it might not quite have been what um, was advertised with regards to tickets sold, but it was a big jump on what we've been getting. I think our average attendance last year was something like just under two thousand. Um, so if you can maintain something in and around that. Um, across the season and it looks like they won't be far off in other games if you look at how ticket sales are going that's a really good sign I, I, clubs were never going to all of a sudden have 20,000 there at men's stadiums with it every week but if if we can consistently be getting four four plus thousands and Liverpool are getting 3,000 which is a record if they can consistently be getting that that's the start of it isn't it that's the starting point and then it's just how you build on that no, 100%. And just very quickly, I will address uh, <laughs> this comment. For anyone who was there, especially in the stand that we were in, I hope that that kid that uh, <laughs> got hit in the face by one of Deb's throw-ins was, <laughs> was not a new fan. And I do hope they return if they were a new fan. For anyone, anyone who doesn't know, Paul was throw In fact, I'll let Mark explain it, actually, because I think Mark had a better eyes on than I did. Can I just apologise? I'm so embarrassed for that throw. I'm, it's just, I thought I was mortified. I was like, no. Um, <laughs> and the ball, the ball got cleared out and it bounced up a few rows and Deb's caught it. And she threw it a, a perfect way and it just hit the bar on the front and it smashed this kid in the face. We shouldn't laugh. But Debs was mortified when she found out. However, there was a certain people who I was stood next to who um, started singing about it and um, being the, the husband, loving husband I am, I kind of joined in with them as well. So, sorry, Deb. It's you say, Mark. It's all all right because uh, I spoke with the family afterwards and Connor's going to give them one of his sign balls. So it's all fine. <laughs> all sorted. <laughs> Deary me. <laughs> So yeah, if anyone's wondering what that comment was, there's your uh, your reference point for that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, back to the uh, back to the attendance, um, <laughs> Barry. How yeah. did you feel about it? Oh, I'll come to you first, Barry. Just briefly on this, how, how did you kind of view the attendance? I think obviously I stood next to you at the game, and when that attendance, when the, we read the attendance was seven thousand, I think I turned to you and said, "It doesn't look like seven thousand to me." But like I said, five thousand. That's still a positive, positive, isn't it? It is. I mean, I sort of tried to justify it in my mind. I was talking to Charlie because we all know that Charlie's very good at counting. We were just trying to look and sort of see. And it was really just a case of trying to work out what the actual capacity of LS3 is and whether or not there was sort of enough there for that to be the case. I was also really confused because it's not often that gets announced at halftime by journalists. So I was a little bit confused as to what was going on. 
Uh, but I trusted the source, trusted the source and the man who was telling me that um, implicitly. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I did think it was a little bit odd. Ultimately, it's a record. And I don't think you can say too much about it other than what Charlie said is, is spot on. The fact that you looked around all three sides that, that people were allowed in, it looked full, it sounded full. It was really nice to hear uh, both of the other stands actually trying to, to start off chance. And, and I think what's really good about that is that as soon as we heard that, we were straight in with them, supporting them, helping them to realise actually, you know, it's, it's, it's not just the people like us that are standing up there singing. Actually, it's everybody. So, yeah, I thought it was really nice. And, and the key thing really is that they come back. That's what we need. 100%. And Mark, your thoughts on this retention, I guess, is, is the key, like Barry's up there. Yeah, it's it's getting this crowd back in, not now while the weather's kind of fine, it's getting them back in when the weather starts to turn into autumnal and winter, when it is cold, when we're all stood there, freezing our bottoms off. That's that's the key for me right now. It's we've got you know, as as you know, we've got good numbers for the next few home games, and then after that that we might see a decline. We've got the old Trafford game in there. I know roughly where we're looking at with tickets right now, just but there's still a long way to go. Um, I thought the atmosphere yesterday was good. Um, it was nice to see the crowd in. It was nice to get a record, but I turned to Shane in about the first 10 minutes and I went, they're going to tell us seven, but there's only four. I said four and Shane was like, no, there could be five. So Shane got it near enough to spot on, but... Um, as he always does. But no, I was, I was happy with the crowd. And I think Barry and, and Charlie are right. It was nice to see it full, especially when you looked it up back on, on the highlights as well. That was the that was the key for me, because if I have to put a slight spin on it, I don't think the, I think the atmosphere was just good. I don't think it was incredible. I think there was parts of the game where I thought, I wish it was a little bit louder in here. I thought it kind of dipped a little. I, I'm not quite sure why. I don't know what, what the issues were there, but there was some kind of, there was the, the best moment for me just very quickly on the atmosphere was when the South Stand started. Um, the, I think it was the Who Are We Red Army chant. I think they started it and then we kind of carried it on. And that right. was the only time I felt that two stands were were chanting together. However, one of the funniest moments for me, sorry, Barry, I know it was, it was when Jack started singing Who Are We Red Army and his voice went and Charlie just turned to look at him like, <coughs> you all right? <laughs> And he just kept it going and going and going. And then Shane turned to me and went, just let's take let's over. Take and, that, that. and that's what we did. And fair play, Debs did help there. She she sort of gave me a little bit of encouragement by singing that as well. Um, but I just wanted to say, you were saying about how, you know, we need to get the, the retention going on and we don't want it. You know, they, they need to be able to come when it's uh, autumn, autumnal winter, I think you called it, that little bit where it's cold. Anyway, the long shot I'm trying to get at, isn't it a good job that Deb's got that out of the way now? Because if that had hit that kid in the middle of winter, he'd never be coming back. Because <laughs> they hurt when it's that cold. It's right there on the nose. Oh, that could have been an A&E job. <laughs> they, they do. Hurt. If anyone's been hit by a football in the winter when, the, when it's a bit icy or something like that, oh, that hurts. <laughs> You've been stinging for days on that one. Um, in answer to this question, very, I, I don't know. I don't think that well, would be I, I can answer it if you term. want. I can answer it very quickly. Um, the short answer is we won't. It's a legality issue. Um, it's this manning of health and safety staff on the terrace because um, and security. There we go. <clears throat> exactly. Um, and John's kind of in agreement on what we've been saying here. You know, talk about increasing the attendance, but you also want different sections of the crowd to start chatting. Exactly, because I think it does sound a little bit isolated sometimes. Like That's why I pointed out that when the South Stand did start that one chant, it sounds a lot louder when you've got two sets of, of kind of areas where the noise is coming from. But that will come with time. You know, bearing in mind we've gone from just having a handful of people to more people now joining in the one position where the songs are generally emanating from. It'll come with time. More, and more people will get involved with that. So. Is, that is that a Liverpool penalty? I've, I can just tell. It looks like it. I just heard. I, I, I saw. Oh, the word. I <laughs> it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it was a don. It was a risk. This turned into a Chelsea Liverpool watch long here. I want to get back back to the game while this is being um, discussed. Sorry, Charlie. I'll come to you kind of first. 
initial thoughts. We'll start with that. So we're going to talk about each goal. We're going to talk about the last of the debutants. Get your player of the match nominations in as well. I'm going to stick a poll in the chat with about 20 minutes to go. So stay tuned at the end for that. But Charlie, your initial thoughts on the game, just kind of the goals, how we played and that kind of thing. We're going to get into it in a bit more detail, but your initial thoughts walking away from the game. Just like just generally without going into too much yeah, detail. It, I, think. Yeah. Um, I really liked the performance. I thought we had a really good, um, just a couple of things, really good turn of pace. So a few times when we were sort of knocking it about slowly at the back and then all of a sudden. It's 2-1. Liverpool are 2-1 up here. <laughs> we're winning oh, the league. I not. told you. I everyone did, I laughed, to, at, everyone laughed at me. Everyone yeah. laughed at me when I sat on here and said we were winning the league. What are you saying um, now? <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of times when we're knocking it around quite slowly at the back and then all of a sudden a change of pace. And it was Maya getting out to honour really quickly. He was skinning everyone alive. Um or the same on the left-hand side, or or Katie dropping to get it and turn, and things happening really quickly, which I liked. What I also found, which was different to last year, sometimes it just felt a bit aimless. I remember standing next to John Foster, MU, MU Women FC, and just being like, oh, this is so slow, just like makes something happen. And um, also what I liked was when Reading defenders got the ball, because it's basically only their defenders that ever had the ball, we harried them, like we really harried them, and we were winning the ball back quite high up the pitch. And we'll, I know we'll get onto it later, but that that level of effort might have also impacted a little bit while we maybe tapered off in, in the second half as well, which led to a lot of changes. But I was really excited. I kept turning around to Barry and going, oh, my God, look how good this football is. Like, um, and it, I know there'll be games when they don't, that doesn't come off or, or this, that and the other. But it just, and there's lots of people saying, oh, it's only Reading. But last year it was only Villa and it was only West Ham. We didn't beat them. Um you beat what's in front of you and we blew them out of the water in 45 minutes. Um, if we do that every game, we're well away, aren't we? No, 100%. I, I actually really agree with this comment because uh, I know Barry turned to me and said, I thought that was your player to watch out for. It was. <laughs> and <laughs> she went she fell over about you. 10 times. It's actually <laughs> had someone else's boots on. <laughs> Indeed, there's there's a lot. of oh, Sang's joined the chat. Not very, uh, not very. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've got a few minutes. Say, I wouldn't be surprised if Chelsea score two. To be honest, because that's just the kind of <laughs> instantly out. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. Um, go on, Mark. What's your kind of initial thoughts on on yesterday's game? Um, I, I'm not going to get as giddy as the most. Some of the people are. I'm I'm going to be my own reserved, calm self about it. However, the first 45 minutes, I thought we were brilliant. I, I thought we we would beat any team if we can play like that for 45 minutes. Yeah, we tapered off in the second half. The thing that I liked about what we yesterday, I thought, you know, yeah, it was great to have Neil back. It was my fantastic debut. Lucia Garcia, brilliant. I What I really liked yesterday was Katie Zellum playing that quarterback role. She wasn't a DM. She was there to play as a quarterback. She was the one who was pinging the passes all over. Hayley Ladd was bobbing forward. Hayley Ladd wasn't doing her usual role. And it's that small change that I now, you can now see what Mark's doing with this team. Um, so I thought yesterday, I thought Maya gets should get all the plaudits. But Zelly yesterday for me playing in that quarterback role, she controlled the game from from start to finish for me, and I think that kind of set the tempo for us. No, I'd agree with that, Barry. What's your your, your initial thoughts off off yesterday's win? Um, short and sweet. I said we were going to win the league, didn't I? So that. I tweeted it yesterday. I tell you, if we do win it, I'm coming back to that tweet and just atting everybody who was laughing at me. <laughs> whoa, whoa, why are you getting the tweet? And I said it on here before you started tweeting it. I turned your back around. How do you start trying to be all Mr. <laughs> What's his name? Nostradamus. Um, no, this, I thought it was a really good game. First half was amazing. As, as Charlie said, we were talking to each other throughout it, really. We tried talking to you, but you weren't listening very much. So we, we just carried on with our own little conversation. It was really good. Just the width. I think that's what we were talking about more than anything was just the width, the way that we kept apart. And it's almost like you would, you, you would teach youngsters, you know, just keep that width, stay out over there because as soon as you get into a tight situation, there's your escape. And we got over there. We were too quick then getting down the wings. And that's where, you know, all of the goals came in from. And we've got such a good threat 
when it comes to a ball inside the box now like that. And, and that's why I think first half we had the goals, second half we didn't because they just tried to cut that supply off and and, and make the, the area congested, which made it a bit more difficult to, to pick out those balls. But it was really, really good, superb. And, you know, at the end of the day, it is Reading. We do have to be serious about it for a second and say it's just Reading. Um, but you can only beat what's in front of you. And as, as teams are seeing here, it's going to be difficult. You know, Liverpool have caused a bit of a problem. Aston Villa have caused a bit of a problem. Um, it's just Arsenal and us that have managed to get past our test. So, you know, it's, it's one game out of 22. Lots to look forward to. But you, you can't fault it. We all come away feeling really happy from that. And, and so we should. No, 100%. Let, let's dive into the goals themselves then, because, I mean, she's on the thumbnail, and I had to title the video after Myla Tissi obviously got the, the first after four minutes. It was, for, for me, she was the stand-up, but we're going to get to that in a little bit later. But just the goal itself, um, just get your, each of your kind of thoughts on that. It was another set piece. There was a stat about our set pieces, and I can't remember what it was. I'm going to have to try and think that out while someone else is talking. But, Charlie, were you surprised? Because a lot of our dangerous attacks came from set pieces yesterday and obviously Maya got the first one it would how would you kind of assess the goal itself do you think it was a little the commentator said it was a little bit a little bit of luck took a bit of a deflection do you see it like that or do you think it was a good finish as well um I think it's a bit of both you make your own look don't you um I I thought it was quite well taken when it first happened because it looked like it was kind of on and I've tried to look back but because it's on FA play obviously you don't get brilliant replays of it do you it's like just the same position as far away it's a little bit slower like that's your replay but it looked to me like she got it a little bit on the half volley and it looped over their keeper who went down like she'd been shot but it was I thought it was a really good finish to the point where I thought it was Tooney or or someone else who you'd more expect to score a goal like that um but she was just a massive danger wasn't she Maya when whenever we had a corner um just really hard for Reading to get hold of and she obviously lost her marker because she ends up being completely unmarked for that on the edge of the box. Um, but I thought it was well taken. And the thing is, Kate, like there was, there was a little period of time, wasn't it, when they kept doing these weird little short corner things, which filming with dread from the Man United men's days. Um, because you know, Katie can put it on a sixpence, can't she? And then that's what she did. Hit hit Letizia, boom, straight in. Keeper had no chance. No, 100%. And uh, go on, Barry and then Mark, you following on this in terms of Maya's uh, first goal and how you thought on that one? You keep catching me out. I think you're going to go to Mark first because you, you go round and you're like, ah, ha, ha, take that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're watching, see when I'm doing something. And he's like, ah, there you go. Um, I still don't know what part of Maya's body that came from. I've watched that goal back now about 18 times um, and I'm still not entirely sure quite how she managed to turn it goalwards. Um, I, I feel like sorry, quite Barry. I feel like she hit it into her own foot. That's the only thing I've been trying to try and I might have seen. Whichever way she's done it, she somehow managed to turn it goalwards, and that's obviously what she was aiming to do to get it back in and towards goal. Whether or not she's directly taken a shot, I don't think so. Um, but either way, she's turned it goalwards, and in it goes. And you know, I think to, for me, it comes down to. Katie Zellum finding her again. This is what she's so dangerous at. <clears throat> she stood there on that corner flag. Who am I going to get it to? There. And that's where it lands. Honestly, she's like David Beckham used to be or Paul Scholes. It's like that old training ground one where Paul Scholes is stood the other side of the training ground and he goes, here, watch this. And then he smacks one like 80 yards and smacks somebody on the head while he's taking a wee. You know, it's just, this is what he does and that's what she does. She's just so good at it. So for me... 100%. It was about the assist as much as it was about my turning it in, but a, a superb start. And, you know, like I say, that's what you want people in there winning the ball and, and turning it goalwards. So, delighted. Absolutely. Uh, Barry's taken everything I was going to say and he said it. So, thanks, Barry. Um, <laughs> um, You're welcome, bro. I, I, think, I, think it, I think it does boil down to, I think the finish was great. I think the great it was a great finish. I don't know how she got it into the goal, but she did, but it, it boils back down to the, to the set piece. It boils down to Zelly, as, as Barry said. Um, she's she's one of, she's our best set piece taker we've got for a reason, and she takes them all for that reason. So, great finish, but the assist was just as important as, because if that assist wasn't there, it would never have got that finish. So, it, it was great finish, but Katie as well, on her 100th appearance for us, it was just one of her usual set pieces. I think 
I think the problem is with most United women fans, we take Katie's set pieces for granted and actually we don't really give them sometimes enough credit that they're due. Um, so for me, that was all Zelly. And then Maya somehow got her body into that position to score the goal. No, 100% on the set pieces because I'm so sick of hearing, oh, that's just a speciality thing. Well, yeah, it is. There's a reason people are not, a majority of the squad aren't very good at it and it's how hard it is to do it. The, the, the thing I will say on the set piece is how consistent. I don't remember us having really bad court, apart from some of the short ones, which I don't understand why we even attempt them. I've never seen a short corner work. The ones that go into the bottom, and even free kicks from wide positions, from things like that, every single one is on an absolute dime. Every time we look at well, most of our you know goals last season as well, every single one is onto a United player's head, and I think that is just testament to delivery. Like I said, you've got to have players in there, but when you, you look at potentially when Tunkara comes into the side, how you know how well she potentially is going to do from some of these set piece got deliveries as well, it's a, a good thing to have, yeah. And, and I think Barry, Barry got it spot on. You look at someone like Bex who stayed after practice to, you know, after training to practice and practice his set pieces. From from things that I've heard, Zelly's exactly the same. She stays behind, she pings 50 balls. And you don't get that good to be at set pieces unless you practice. Yeah, every now and again, you'll hit the foot, you know, you'll hit the person at the front post. But you'll accept that because the next two will go exactly <clears throat> where she wants them to go and we'll get something out of it. It's like that old uh, golfing saying, isn't it? You know, the um, the more I practice, the luckier I get. Uh, and that's just what she's in that respect. Lucky because she works hard on it. And so, you know. Um, but also, I said to Charlie for one of the free kicks, Millie Turner took one, didn't she? Um, and had the shot. That, that Was it Millie Turner? Lassie. Oh, Russo, sorry. They're both blonde. I got myself lost there. I pictured the wrong thing. But yes, either way, Russo got the chance to have one as well. And I just thought that was a good thing because you don't always have the same person over the the free kick. It, it freshens it up a little bit. So, And she's willing to do that. She steps uh, steps aside. And 2-1, by the way, is how it's finished to the, uh, the team in red. Indeed. Um Continuing, obviously, with the with the Zellum conversation, obviously the second goal, it was it was quite funny actually. I think I was saying to you, Barry, when the ball was played, obviously, I think if I'm right in remembering, it was Tooney that played it through to Russo, who then took it around the keeper. And I remember I was almost live commentating with you, Barry. I was like, "Yeah, into Russo, she's going around the keeper. Penalty's coming up. Goes around the keeper, gets a penalty." You could see that coming a mile away because of the way Russo was running. She's running away from goal. You you know what's coming from there. Um, I'm not going to talk too much in terms of the penalty because it's 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 a decent penalty. It it, it went in. <laughs> um, you can't really dissect a penalty too much. But I guess the movement again. You know, we talk about this was still early on in the game. I think 14 minutes in. You know, we scored two 0 up, and we were dominating at that point. The amount of chances we had. So, Charlie, I guess it was, is that the key thing for you? The fact that we got into that position again. It's Russo making that kind of diagonal run and the 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 vision. I guess to to see her as well. Yeah, but absolutely. I think that was a quite a big change and led to the to the penalty um for us, but quite a big change from yesterday was the fact that Russo was able to do more things like that, um, rather than having to come deep to get the ball, which is kind of what she was having to do a fair bit last year. And then she was sort of the one delivering the ball and, and she can't deliver it to herself and it was frustrating. Whereas there's so much movement in and around now and so many other people taking responsibility that she's able to make those runs and she's able to find those channels, which again just opens up so many more opportunities. Um, and obviously a penalty is a penalty. Katie's Katie's brilliant at them. If if we needed penalty taking to win a trophy or to get into Champions League, I would pick her literally every single time. Um, and I know sometimes people can downplay the importance of set pieces. They're dead important. If you if you if you took away all penalties. It would completely change the landscape of how leagues and all sorts of things would have finished. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad she got it on 100th, 100th appearance, but I'm glad that uh, we've got Russo getting herself into those positions, running off the last defender, because she's quite a big player, isn't she, Russo? She looks a bit like um, a back in rugby. She looks a bit like a fly-off. But she's got a bit of pace. She's got a bit of gas over 10 yards. It's nice to see her making those runs and, and causing havoc, really, along with the other two players up alongside her. No, 100% got Mark. What I enjoyed about Lessie's overall performance yesterday and the lead up to that goal is that for a majority of last season, 
she was playing out on the right hand side and she was in and out of games yesterday she was a constant menace from minute one until she was subbed and that's because she's playing in her natural position and it's also because mark's got people with with proper width out on the right and the left hand side that can dink balls in in for her so for me yesterday lessie in her natural position she's that natural threat that we've kind of been talking about for a long time and yesterday we saw it and and the the penalty it showed that off the the run she made it was always it was going to end it was going to end in two ways it was either going to end up as a goal or a penalty because of the way her run she was that direct and i don't think last season we, we saw that enough of her but i think this season we will see it a lot more and i think mark is building a team around now not just one player but potentially a few players so for me it's it was lessie was 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 good yesterday she really was yeah i can't say that mark's stolen everything that i was going to say but um a, a fair bit of it um <clears throat> and i think that's because we are all going to be pretty much on the same page about this because it just was that good um <clears throat> so i suppose what i'll come out with on this is you know i i've said all through the summer uh, and i've been criticized un unusually um for those thoughts but um also by yourself young connor you know but i've said it from and i'm so pleased to hear you using the same language that i used to you which was that mark skinner will be living and dying decisions that he made and we said this is his team now he's had the opportunity to have a transfer window he got seven people in he had a whole bunch of people leave as well um whether that be through selling or through loans <clears throat> and what i said to i think charlie and some of the others around me at that point was that it was almost like he'd had a plan it's almost like he'd had a plan from the start a vision of how it was that he wanted manchester united women to perform and i think that first half is what we saw is his vision of how he wants them to play. He wants us to be fast going forward. He wants us to have that attack. He wants us to have that width. And he said after the game, this is why he's purchased these players and we've got them on the bench so that they're able to come on and we can keep that intensity going. I just think that the way in which Russo's played, I said she was going to be dangerous and I said that she's going to be getting double figures this season um, and pushing for golden boot. Um, my Letitia obviously wants to have a go at that, but we'll see if, if that's still the case when we get to the end. But it, she was just really, really good. And I also take umbrage with us all saying you can't dissect a penalty. We're English, for God's sake. If there's one thing we should know, it's that penalty taking is not an easy thing to do. And that generally our genetics, as English people, mean that we're not very good at them. Katie Zellum has learned how to do it. And I was scared for her going up there because on top of all of that, she's got the fact it's her hundredth game as well. She knows there's more people watching than usual. There was loads of stuff on her shoulders there. And she put it away as if she was shopping for a loaf of bread in Tesco's or as the other shops do exist. <laughs> no, you make a fair point on, on penalties. The reason why I said you can't really dissect it is because you, you're stepping up to a ball and, and <laughs> you know, it's basically a 1v1. You can't dissect it too. You're either you're just talking about where they kicked it. Top left, bottom left, top right, bottom right, middle. So that's why I said that. Um, but yeah, I do agree question, on your point. The biggest question was, do you, does anybody think it wasn't a penalty? My mate said that. He texted me and said, oh, I wasn't sure enough have contact. And I went, well, from my view, I thought it was. I've watched it again. I still think it was. I think she's gone recklessly through her. I don't know that she got a hand to the ball. Couldn't really see it too well from the view that I had. But did you think it was not at in the there? Time, at the time, I didn't. I'll be honest, I didn't think it was a pen. <clears throat> well, what, but watching the highlights... Yeah, you you can understand why from where the ref was. It's uh, it's uh, it's gone down. It was a seven last week, <laughs> so we've gone down. Five out of ten. That's what I give Chelsea. To be fair, <laughs> um, I've just watched the thing. But I guess from if you look at it from a Reading point of view, it, it is a penalty. There's definitely contact there. But if I was Reading, I'd be a bit annoyed because it's it's so obvious. Like I said, you can see what Russo's trying to do. She's always going to knock it to the left. 
So if you're the keeper, why are you coming out like that? I, I don't know. Uh, to me, it's just very obvious what. I think we got a penalty. It might have been against Villa or Birmingham last season. Exactly the same as that. That same, <laughs> same, same area. Russo knocks it to the left. You know, she's not going to score from that angle. So I don't know. Anyway, I'm not complaining. We scored the penalty anyway. Um, I'm actually going to skip over the third goal and go to Russo's goal, considering we're kind of uh, talking about Russo as a whole here. And I want to talk about the kind of importance of getting off the mark because if she's going to... Uh, Barry, you've obviously said double figures. There's a lot of people saying she's in the golden boot race this season and things like that. I just want to get your all thoughts on kind of her importance of you know, getting the goal in game one because if we'd have got two, three, four games in and she hasn't scored, will that pressure start to mount on her that she hasn't scored? So, Charlie, I think you predicted in your little video uh, that you did for us that's going to be on uh, on the video that goes out tomorrow that I think you said a Russo power header. So uh, you were correct on the, on that one. So um, what did you think of the goal and I guess the importance of her getting off the mark in, uh, in game one? Um, it was probably my favourite one just because of the build-up play. I feel like Honor and Lucia had been causing absolute mayhem down that right-hand side um, up until that point. Um, and Reading just couldn't couldn't keep up at all. And it, it just felt like as soon as Lucia played a bit of a cheeky back heel and Honor, Honor ran past their, their full-back, I just knew it was going to be a goal. If you get that to Russo across like that at pace... No one's stopping her. Um, we've seen it for England. We've seen it for, for United last season. Um, and I do think it's important. I think it's important when you are the focal point of a team's attack and a team that is going for the Champions League, the sooner you score, the better. And we need her firing on all cylinders. If she's if she's scoring 15 goals for us this season, that means we're in amongst it for me. Um, so the sooner, the better. And I don't care if it's goal one or goal four, you just need your number nine scoring regularly um I always thought she'd get on the score sheet I always thought she would because she's such a threat um and we've got so much um so many different players who can provide service to her in all sorts of different ways now whether it's set pieces whether it's crosses in open play whether it's through balls whether she creates it herself um but I think yeah it was a brilliant goal I think the build-up was even better I thought Honor was amazing yesterday I think it was a bit of an understated performance perhaps um but again, she caused all sorts of issues. She looked even better. Um, the way she just got got around those those Reading players, just skipped through challenges. Um, and for me, her link up play with Lucia was just bananas. It was like it was like telepathic, wasn't it? They just knew where each other were going to be all the time. And also Maya a little bit because Maya was the right side of centre back, wasn't she? I think she played the quick pass. That might be one of those times. You know when I said at the start. Sometimes felt like we were starting to knock it about slowly and then there was all of a sudden a just change in pace. So just shifting Reading around, Maya whips it out really quickly. Um, because if you notice, I'm going on a tangent here, the few times we had to defend, I think I said to Barry, we're only defending as a three. It's only the two centre-backs and Hannah. Honor was staying quite high up the pitch on the touchline um, and obviously deliberately as an outlet. Um, and it worked really well yesterday. And it was it was an incredible goal. It was a proper Russo goal for me. Love a thumping header. No, indeed. Like I said, you got your prediction. Uh, you didn't get the score right, I don't think, but you did get... Uh, or did or get any that. of the other scorers. Russo's a bit of a given, isn't it? You say Russo's going to score. Probably it's going to happen. <laughs> indeed. So, uh, Barry, for yourself, how did you kind of... Uh, just sticking with Russo before we look at uh, Meyer in a bit more detail, how did you kind of assess her performance as a whole and also just the goal itself? Because Russo, for me, is one of the best in the league at that. Because, again, if you watch the goal back, she's falling backwards. Again, she I don't know if she, if she head the ball normally. I think it's going over the bar. She, she's always, for me, falling backwards and managed to get, kind of get her head round it. So, I'd say uh, a trademark goal is what I call it at the moment, because I, I feel she's just re really, really good at those. A lot of her goals that I've seen have been her rising above the defence or uh, whoever it is who's marking her, getting up that, that little bit higher than the rest and, and popping it down towards the goal. And she did really well with it. So, I mean, that was good. I, I think, I feel like it's difficult in that front line to, to pick one player that's, done exceptionally well. I think Leah Galton was superb down the left. She did, you know, fantastic work, as did Garcia, uh, as did Russo, to be fair. So I think as a three, you know, they worked really, really hard. Tooney behind, absolutely brilliant. So I think it's harsh to, to, to sort of pull one out and say, you know, she, they were better than the rest. Because I think they all gave 
um, you know, solid eight performance each, if I'm honest with you. But, yeah, I think for me, Russo, superb header. Um, and I think Devs has already said it as well. I think that the big one was the one in the second half because I'd have put all of my money, my car, my possessions, all my worldly goods, um, and indeed bet my own life potentially that that was going in. Uh, and so did the scoreboard operator, <laughs> clearly, um, because it changed it already. So, uh, yeah, listen, she's superb and she will. She'll get double figures and she's going to be pushing for uh, for the top. In answer to your proper question, is that good for her? Massively so. You know, it's a really big thing to get off the off immediately. And um, she just goes on from there. But she's in a rich vein of form and we've just got to take advantage of that while we can. 100%. That, that goal in the second, I didn't just flash up on the scoreboard. It came up on everything. I got my, my phone pinged off that there was a fifth <laughs> goal. I think I think it was on Twitter as well. There was a fifth goal from the WSL account. Like everyone just, like you said, because it's Russo, I don't know what they were looking at because it is a few inches wide. But um, just very quickly, Mark, before you can wait. as well. <laughs> where, where, you, where you can watch, I mean, oh, I've only just reread re re that. Um, uh, comment i thought you were on about actually man united um I, I i don't know it's another youtube channel i would uh go and search for that one if you're looking for that um mark for yourself just sticking with russo before we move on to on to myra and her performance how did you kind of i know you've already briefly mentioned it but the goal as well yeah the goal i think charlie summed it up best the goal is the typical lessy goal you'd come to expect that kind of goal um but we all know strikers thrive on confidence after the summer less he's had She'll be brimmed full of confidence, and that can only that can only help her and help us. You know, playing in her natural position, I said it before, is also a massive help. She's going to become a threat. Defenders defenders will be quite happy if she played out on the right because they don't have to put up with her. You know, as Charlie said, her physicality. She's 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 a big person. She, she's going to outpower a lot of defenders with the way she is with her build. Um, so, yeah, for me, you know, I'd rather a score yesterday than, you know, as you said, kind of wait three or four games into the league to get the first one. Now she can she can build on it. And, you know, just she's got a goal now. She doesn't have to worry about getting off the mark. That's now ticked off. It's now I need to get more. And and it's just that, you know, we, we, we always use the word progression. And, and now it, for her, it's that progression of, doing it on a regular basis for us. No, I'd agree with that as well. But what is happening here on this Liverpool? They've got, I think it's oh, Kenny okay. Smith. And there's, there's two of them doing the, um, like the Carragher and Gary Neville thing. And then there's the presenter who I'm afraid I don't know. You've got Karen Carney and Kelly Smith though. And if I'm honest, if I'd have just turned away and turned back to it, it's a little bit like watching Harry Potter when Madame Maxine comes in with all of her girls from Bo Batten, because the height difference is mad. It's <laughs> she's huge. And she's wearing heels. Who didn't tell her to wear flats? It's <laughs> unbelievable. It's like a ski slope. I can't believe what I'm watching here. I can't believe it. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to interject with that. I can't even remember what I was going to say now. Um... <laughs> I can't remember what I was going to say. I'm going to move on to the next thing. Anyway, I can't goal, probably. Um, it was, but what I am going to say, because we are about um, just over halfway in, I said I was going to do it. So I'm going to put the player of the match uh, poll in the chat. Now, we, we had a little bit of discussion in the ground yesterday. I've asked a load of people who, because I can only put four names on the poll. Uh, the four names we have chosen, uh, Maya Letizia, Katie Zellum, Alessia Russo, or Honor. So I'll let you viewers uh, debate that over the next 20 minutes and we'll come to each of ours um, towards the end as well. I've just put that in the chat now. So get voting on that and we'll come back to that in about 20 minutes time. Um, but Charlie, I want to come back to yourself from, from a Maya point of view because we spoke before the season, potentially lining up at centre half. Obviously, I got a bit, <laughs> a bit of stick for that as well. Um, but to me, she looks completely solid in that position. I think... The passing range, that was a thing for me. I know she got the two goals and you can talk about the second goal as well, but the passing range from that right centre-back position and also, as you said, the link-up with Honor as well. How kind of excited are you? Two questions, really. I guess, how, how would you assess her performance from a centre-back point of view? And I guess, would you change it? You know, would you put her at full-back now after seeing her in the WSL as centre-back as well? Um, I'm going to get overexcited here. I'm going to be the opposite of Mark. 
Um, I don't think she was solid. I thought she was exceptional yesterday. I thought her and Millie paired together were amazing. It's like two new signings, that isn't it? Um, but she had everything. But we saw that. We saw that in the in the preseason at the Toulouse, didn't we? She did stand out in those games as well. Um, but yeah, her her ability to read the game is really really good. Um, I think she made the most interceptions. I think was it potentially along with Katie, you might have talked about earlier. Made a good amount of interceptions. It was a funny one, really, because defensively we didn't have much to do. There wasn't a lot to do, so they had to concentrate. She had to co be concentrating the odd time when when Reading did have the ball. So what was really apparent yesterday was how how good she is at building attacks from centre back. Um, and clearly that's how Mark wants to play. He wants to play out from the back, doesn't he? That was apparent yesterday. Um, but her ability to read when was the right time to hold on to the ball. Oh, was, yeah. When, when was the right time to, to hold on to the ball? When was the right time to make the pass, whether it was a short one out wide to honour, who could then do what she needed to do, or whether it was the diagonal pass um, across to Leah. That was on all the time. And there was two or three times that Leah Galton, no longer offside, was able to make that run and pick the ball up. So I think we saw... Um, the really good attacking side of her as a centre back. I wouldn't change it um, necessarily. I would. I would be interested going forward to see what happens with. I think I turned to Barry yesterday and I said, "If your weakest defender is Hannah Blundell, then it's not too bad, is it?" But I would just. I would just wonder when you've got a fight in fit and rare and to go to Ankara, what's going to happen there? Because you can't not play Maya. Or mayor, there was a confusion over which one it was. Um, but it's that weird thing if you've got a good centre back pairing and a world class goalkeeper behind them, which we have, I, oh, it's a that's a really tough one. I'm gonna have to sit on the fence a little bit because I just don't know. I might wait and see what the other two say and then jump on the back of that. Um, but she was amazing yesterday. We didn't have to see much from a defensively, but from an attacking point of view, building play, she was amazing, really, really good. That debate's going to be rumbling on all season. I'm, uh, I'm sure. Definitely, I think Barry's crossed his arms in disgust. I think at this comment, <laughs> Barry comments on people's height. Um, I just want to sit comfortably, Connor. Not every time I cross <laughs> my arms means I'm an angry little elf. Right? <laughs> and there's uh, some some other discussions. I can't believe. Um, I mean, next time, I think if you can, if you can get over the barrier next time, you might make the uh, <laughs> might make the shortlist. I think on the on that one. Um, Go on, Barry. Talk to me about Maya's performance then, and uh, I guess the same questions really in terms of centre back. And look, like Charlie said, there we didn't see her too much defensively, so it's hard to judge her as a as a solid centre back, I guess, because she didn't get tested too much. But like I said, off going forward, I thought, like Charlie said, those diagonal passes, especially to Leah, were fantastic and setting up play. I mean, to be fair, we we quashed pretty much anything they they tried to bring forward. So I think that tells you that the back four did an excellent job. Um, we were raving about <clears throat> the people that we've got in first choice for our defence. And again, it still comes down to the depth that we have that we can choose from. The fact that we are now having a conversation here about should we be playing Mayor at, at centre-back? Should she be at full-back? Um, the fact that we've still got Tunkara, who obviously wasn't you know, fully ready to take part at the weekend. Otherwise, you'd assume that she might have uh, had an appearance as well. It's just fantastic. The knowledge even that Leah Galton could drop back there if she really needed to at left back. You know, we, we've got options. And we were talking about this during the uh, the, the summer and throughout our pre-season, that actually this is really important that we have those options, that we can move people around. And that it's not just a case of putting them there just because, but because they're actually good at what they're doing. And I think that's that's huge. For me, Mayo was like head and shoulders above the rest, really. And, and that, that second goal was, was by far the, the better of the two. Um, because we know for a fact she meant it, for sure, on that one. Um, and it was just so good. And you could see the joy on her face as well. She was delighted all the way through the game and especially at the end as well. I think it's a fantastic start. And, you know, I, I, I honestly... I don't get into these technical things quite so much. You know, when people say, should they go right? Should they go left? Should they go? Just put them where Mark Skinner wants to put them. He watches them. He watches them. I'm not bothered. I'm there to support those girls and I will do that. If they step across that line, I will support them wherever they play. You can put Mary Earps up front if you want and I'll still cheer for her to do well. 
Um, and if it doesn't work, then we have that discussion later on because there's only one person to blame for that. But the girls themselves will be supportive because you know they're going to give everything. So, go on, Mark. What's your? Uh, you can have the f- just very quickly on the Maya Mayer thing. I think that depends where you're from. I'm noticing a pattern here, which whether you're a north to s- north or south divide, I think is how you were. Uh, I would, order, I would actually call her Maya, but I just, I'm just i sure I heard one of the players call her Maya, so that's why I've sort of gone with that, because I'm presuming they would know. Mm-hmm. I'll just go with Latisse, and I'll keep out of that. I'll, just, I'll keep my, my line fair and square on that one. I, I think Barry and Charlie both make really good points. I think from a defensive point of view, we didn't really, she wasn't tested, so it's very hard to see whether... That's where she's going to play. I think a fit to Ankara comes in. She plays the centre back. At, it, that's her natural position. I think Maya's got the versatility to play anywhere along the back four, which is something that I think we desperately need. I think her. When you look at our back four, we rely so much on honour. Predominantly. I don't think we need to probably as much now. And I know that's going to upset some people. I don't mean it in a negative way. I mean, we can actually give Honor a rest and play Maya or Maya or Latis um, and take some of that weight off on her shoulders. Because, you know, yesterday someone said it before. At one point, we were defending with Latis, Millie, and Hannah. Honor was far, far, far up the pitch. And I think when you look at her passing range, I, I, you know, yesterday she was really good at centre-back. The passing range going forward was brilliant. However, I would like to see her, because we saw her in pre-season, playing as right-back with honour at, at, at left-back and then Hannah coming on as well. So I don't actually know what her best position is yet. And I think Mark, that's Mark's job to now find her best position but what I will say is, until Tu and Car is fit, I have no issue whatsoever with him playing Meyer and uh, Millie and Latis at centre back because they look solid. My only fear, and it is my my fear, is that we've usually used, you know, we used to have Amy and Millie, so we had to want one strong, uh, tough tackling centre back. I don't see that in that pair. That's but that's me as a, a that's my own personal thing. Uh, I'm not saying neither of them can tackle. I just um, or Aoife, thanks, Debs. Uh, I just see that as my one bit of uh, maybe that. Uh, just on Aoife, I wouldn't mind seeing her in midfield. To be honest, stick her in a kind of a defensive midfield role. I wouldn't mind seeing her there. To be honest, I think we've got the the centre back cover. Um, you could argue, unless we get a boatload of injuries, but I wouldn't mind seeing it. I'm going to start that agenda right here, right now. <laughs> I'm going to be pushing for that. Because I know the one thing we've not had over the course of the last couple of years is an argument as to who could fit in that midfield, is there, Connor? <laughs> and, well, uh, so let's take the defender and put them in there. <laughs> this this is a shout as well. As a, yes, I agree. She can also play midfield as well, by the way. Um, and <laughs> Michael's put this comment in three times, Barry, so I think he, uh, he wants you to... <laughs> you did hear a play. I know, I did. That's why I said it. I'm just crazy. It would be helpful if you told me which one it was. <laughs> Remember what I'm talking about. It's getting old. Do you know for saying tizzy? I mean, I don't think I'll be calling her that. That's that's probably a nickname if you're close to the player. That's probably not one uh, <laughs> you're calling her on here. Um, I don't get into a tizzy. Come on. <laughs> As always, a point. it's taking you 49 minutes to get a pun in the show, Barry. That's uh, I'm trying to be sensible point. today for a little bit. <laughs> um. Right, okay, we'll move on because we'll look to the kind of the last section of the show then. But just before we do that, I want to, um, Charlie, you mentioned at the start that, you know, there's a couple of people on that. And I wanted to ask this question anyway, people saying that it's only Reading. Now, I want to bring up uh, a stat that might be a slight concern to people. It depends how you analyse games, I guess, whether this is a concern to you or not. Um, and it, the reason why I mention it is because it's something that Skinner mentioned in his kind of post-match uh, review or however you want to say it. Now, th- these are the stats, obviously, for the full game. But when you compare the half-time 
obviously look there, you know, 70%, just under 70% possession, 14 shots, seven on target. When you compare that to the second half, we had a lot more possession, but only one shot on target. Skinner mentioned, obviously, after the game that Reading came out in the second half with a with a much lower block. They defended a lot better. Now, that to me is a slight concern. I wouldn't say it's a concern at all, really, but it's just a minor thing that we struggled last season against a team that sits back. Reading sat back in the second half and we only had one shot on target and didn't really, obviously I know that chance that we mentioned before, the Russo one that was just wide. So you can't really look at shots on target just in absolutes. But is there any concern, and that's an open question to anyone, is there an, any concern that in the second half we didn't really just fully go for it and score kind of two or three more? Um, I, I think... There was there was also the fact that we made a, a which is a good thing a glut of substitutions over a, a five or six minute period which is going to have an impact on um, how you're playing. Um, it also felt a little bit to me like those five substitutions all at once meant because because we were so far ahead of Reading and they weren't trying to get back into the game at all. It almost became a bit pre season ish. Like it, I just felt like they were trying to get minutes in the legs for other players. But obviously, Mark coming out and saying that that's something to work on. Clearly, he still wants them to be clinical. He wants them to be ruthless, doesn't he? But, and yeah, people say it's only, we talk about people saying it's only Reading. I'm sure Chelsea today would have started off by saying it's only Liverpool. And then look what's happened there. Um, but we, there was good chances. Garcia had a really good chance when she was through on goal, one-on-one with the keeper and, and she probably should have buried it. Um, there was Russo's chance, Nikita Paris at the back post for a header, but it was the cross was just a little bit too high, wasn't it? Um, I think there might have been one or two others where, Garcia, if she connected with it a bit better, I'm not going to go with her, by the way, she was brilliant. We would have had more. Um, but yeah, it yeah, when you go in at half time 4 0 up, and then the mentality of of the team you're playing is it just needs to be damage limitation, that does make it more difficult. I just I just think it's a bit of a myth that we didn't do anything at all. It was disappointing that we didn't score again. I agree with that but there were opportunities there. And also teams are going to do that. If they're losing 4-0, they're going to come out and they're just going to tuck in, aren't they? Because you don't want to be humiliated. Um, and if we continue to blow teams away in 45 minutes, then I'm not really that bothered, to be honest. Um, but yeah, perhaps you'll have scored a couple more, but I, I will, I will, and I'm happy for you guys to disagree with me, but I think it's a myth that we didn't create anything in the second half. I think that's a load of twaddle. The intensity might have gone down a little bit. I agree with that. The, the mass amounts of subs might have had an impact. Um, in fact, I think it did. But I've no issue with that because we want Paris to have minutes. We want Leon to have minutes. We want this to happen. We want Vilda to have minutes to see if she can slot in and, and have an impact. Um, but a win for me, a win is a win. Reading, Reading didn't put a glove on us all game. And for me, that's really important. I, I would say from that, um, you look at, First of all, the reason we didn't score another goal was actually Connor's fault. Um, and I should explain why. It's a very serious reason, you'll all realise. He was talking and telling us to check out the graphics that was on the screen. Charlie will back me up here. He said, make sure the next time we score a goal, you look at the graphics on that screen. And so, of course, the uh, the footballing gods went, well, that's not happening. We don't, we don't bow to you. Uh, and so there were no more goals. Uh, even when there was a goal put up there, they didn't put any graphics up because it wasn't really a goal. So, yeah, that's that's the first point. Uh, but the more serious point I would make from that is I don't know what people want. I struggle. I, I, I watched pretty much all of last season. I don't recall us having a, an emphatic win to this level, really. A couple of five nils. But this was massive. We've just taken a team apart in the first half of a match why would you go out there for the second half of the match and play at the same level at the same intensity for a start when the other side isn't going past the halfway line they're not interested they're just like stop so charlie's right we did make some chances we did do some things i, I said to her if garcia just had that little bit more composure in the second half you know she was snatching it seemed at a couple of chances probably excited to get a goal because it you know it was there for the taking i don't think uh, it, it's an issue if we go in at half time at four nil in every single game we're not going to lose any so i would take that pattern of play 
every single week. In fact, it'd be great because if we could guarantee that, it'd be like a guy in the half time, which would get me in a little bit earlier. So that'd be good. Um, I don't read too much into stats. I've, I've never read too much into them. I think they're great for people who want to see the reason why you've either lost a game or drawn a game. But we can go, oh, well, we had more of the ball, but we didn't create enough. But, you know, we were, for the first 45 minutes, Reading weren't even in the game. We blew them out of the park. Yeah, the second half, we dipped down, but Reading weren't troubling us. I, you know, you look at the stats and what is it? They had one shot on goal. One shot. Mary was a by Mary was a spectator for most of that game. So do I read too much into the stats? Do I read too much into Reading? No. I'm I'm looking at the opposite way. We played for, for 45 minutes, we blew a team out of the out of the water. Completely out of the water. They couldn't handle us. And in the second half, as someone said in the comments, they parked the bus. That was it. That was their goal, not to concede any more. Now, should we have scored more? Yeah. But as Debs has just put on at the very bottom, the best stat is the scoreline. And as Barry said, if we can go in at 2 3 nil up at every game at half time, we're going to be, you know, I'm not going to get giddy like the rest of you. We'll be there or thereabouts at come the end of the season. But all we can do is play the team in front of us. So, Reading have been notoriously one of our bogey teams. We seem to beat them all the time at LSV. But what happens when we go away? Yesterday, we had a bumper crowd. The crowd would have helped that team yesterday. Let's see what happens next week when we go down to Dagenham and we're playing the West Ham team where they will have more, more than us there. And let's see if they can put on the same performance. Look, we'll just, you know, let's see where we go. <laughs> And also, I don't know the last. Um, oh, sorry, go on. Get you joking? No, it's it's not my uh, it's not my joke. I do uh, I, I do like that comment, Charlie. Yeah. I'm, I'm just waiting for Deb's reply in the in the chat. It's in there. It's, in there. <laughs> it's funny actually because when we were eating these mega buttons, she said to me, "Would you like some?" So I took some because she was getting a bit greedy with them, um, and I explained to her. I said, "When you know when you used to have these ancient funerals where people would go on the." on the water and they'd have like big coins put over their eyes as they were sent off to pay for the after. I said, we're going to do that with mega buttons for you. And I think if there's too many more things like that being said, uh, that funeral could be coming a bit sooner rather than later. Because the they ball did might not disappoint. Next time, Charlie. And I've got a new friend. I've got a new friend now anyway. So thanks. I'll dive in front of you. Absolutely. Um, but what I was saying from last, uh, from last year, I don't know if you remember, I did a top four comparison um with regards to shots on target and and goals scored um and I, I remember making this exact point because we weren't quite at the level we wanted to be we were just a little bit better than Spurs, um with a 30 so uh, sorry the man city at the time with 37 percent. but arsenal and chelsea were on 44 now i'm not i'm not saying for one minute that we're going to maintain a 50 percent ratio all the way across but if we if we are near enough there or thereabouts with that, then we're in a great shout. So I just think that's huge. We took a lot more of our chances than we have asked. And so that's really important. Charlie's giggling again. What's made you chuckle? Is it is it that comment, mate? She is our mate as well. Great friend. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. I know. Yeah, I, I was there when she said, Yeah, of course you can, mate. <laughs> He was a loving, straight from the beginning. And then security came over. Security came right in. He's like, happy. He's like, hang on, I thought I was your mate. I'm like, you can be my mate instead, mate. He's like, all right, mate, no problem. <laughs> Great. In fact, the only person that did have a mate at that point was Big Johnny K and you. So <laughs> I was going to say, I was just stood there. I was just a spare part, just looking on, just uh, as Charlie was waving. Yeah, see you next week, mate. Yeah, just uh, <laughs> everything. But no, you've made a new friend there, Charlie, I'm sure. I'm sure she remembers that exchange. I'm sure she went home. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh you later. broke you broke a child's nose, <laughs> Deborah. You've literally. <laughs> I'm still embarrassed. <laughs> the thing is, you've no leg to stand on. 
you didn't just you, know, you didn't speak to the person whose nose you broke, Deborah. That's what went wrong. You could have done that <laughs> and you could have between mates. The thing was though, I don't know, I shouldn't laugh though, but I was watching the flight of the ball. It was the, like it was when it, the ball bounced back, the kids' head just went bang. <laughs> And I shouldn't laugh, but it was so funny. It was when everyone turned around and booed her. Boo. Honestly, she was like a pantomime villain, wasn't she? She's like, yeah, 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 whatever. I just threw the ball back. <laughs> but deep down, she was dying inside. I could see it. I, I do wonder what the players thought in that moment, why we were all booing, because not a lot of them probably were looking at, you know, what was going on. Because <laughs> they would have been waiting for the football. They weren't playing football. We had the football. Oh, dear. John's getting jealous here. <laughs> Well, there's no, emo- there's no emojis now. She's not even putting the emojis. Be fair. She's getting cross. I was going to say, yeah, there's, there's no commas, there's no anything, and no full stop. <laughs> you know, I'm half expecting Deb to come to that door that's behind Mark. He's <laughs> outside playing with the ball. <laughs> oh, dear me. Um, Honestly, the next time we see you two, she's going to do that one because I sent her a video of the one that does the gymnastics throw, where they roll over and, and then do that. And I've seen that when they've done that. And there was somebody stood right in front of them as they threw the ball. And that's going to be you, Charlie. Horizontal. <laughs> look, look, I mean, it was horrible what happened to the kid. And, and we're joking aside. However, when it happened, it was the level of hysterical that we all went into. It was That was the funniest bit. Obviously, seeing the Roy call on the kid's head for me, that was hysterical. <laughs> but I shouldn't laugh, and I am sorry, Debs, but I was so embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, it, I it, don't know. Uh, I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly, uh, it certainly made the. Uh, it's it made people laugh. I'm sure it didn't make the kid laugh. But, uh, uh, honestly, Mick, if I would love to see if anyone had any kind of footage of that because it. It was it was the bit of like I said the booing afterwards. Shane was straight in there with a song and a bit of a chant as well. It was uh it was quite... Deb, you you handled it well. I thought if uh, if that's any consolation to you, I thought you handled it very well. <laughs> What's that? The throw or the? Hang on, she really like, didn't handle it well because the throw was rubbish. It <laughs> slipped out of her hands. Oh, I'm so gonna get thrown out of no. tonight. <laughs> Johnny Kay's getting a bit upset there, isn't he? Yeah, he's... Outrageous behaviour. That's a two-footed tackle, John. <laughs> um, no, Deb, we'll move on. We'll uh, we'll spare you any more. Uh... <laughs> Charlie no. might bring it up at some point. but no. uh... <laughs> We've got next we've got next Sunday to get through yet. Every time the ball comes near it, I'm going to be like, huh? <laughs> expect- come, on, yeah. come on, we've had enough of these throwaway comments. <laughs> It's not having the impact we wanted. <laughs> oh, crikey. Right. I'll bring it back to the uh, to the game itself. Before we look to wrap up, um, I will get to the player of the match thing in a second. Um, I'll, I'll bring that part. So if you haven't voted, make sure you do on that one. Um, before we do that, anyone else that stood out for any of you? Was there anyone that we've not spoken about that you thought deserves a, a mention? That we've not spoken. Oh, no, hmm. We've talked about. We've talked about Garcia, haven't we? We've talked about her sort of. The, in and the, the, yeah, the link people. up with Honor. I don't want us to go the, through the whole squad was, just naming players. It was nice to have. Um, it, but... it was nice to have Haley Ladd in there because she didn't play much in pre season, did she? Mm-hmm. Um, it was nice to have her her back there marshalling things, um, <clears> which freed up freed up Kay, Kay Zelly a bit, didn't it? To do the business. Everyone was just good, weren't they? But Reading didn't offer much, so. That, that's that's the thing for me. I think that, that's why for me there's no standard because you could make a you could go through the whole squad. I'm not going to do that because you could just say every player. But I don't think there was anyone else other than the four we've mentioned. I think that deserved like, that was everyone was just seven out of tens, weren't they? I don't think there was anyone apart from yeah. the four we mentioned that was higher yeah. than that. Unless anyone can disagree and find a shot someone else. Uh, I think Charlie said it um, with about Haley Ladd. She just went about her job 
and she was just quiet. We, you know, we know what we expect from Hayley Ladd. So for me, Hayley Ladd would, would be up there. Um, but I think sometimes Hayley Ladd is kind of like the, the Dennis Irwin of old. She just gets on with the job. She doesn't get, you know, the plaud. It's really she should. Um, I thought Jade Moore, when she came on, I thought Adriana Leon, when she came on, they changed the game. My only, the only negative side to yesterday for me was when we brought on Martha Thomas because she wasn't going to run. She's she's not running in behind. She was coming out wide to play on the right and dink a ball in. And I think we lost a little bit there and through that. But I think everyone who came, played yesterday was a good 7 out of 10, I would say. Yeah, Reading were there to take a kick in and we gave them a kick in. And that's what you want, isn't it? If they're there for the take in, you need to punish <clears> them. And they punish them. No, exactly. Um, right, I'll come to each of you for your, for your player of the match and who you voted for, um, and you give your reasons as to why, and then I'll get to the... I don't think the vote is going to change in the chat, though, just looking at the percentage numbers. I think one player has won it quite comfortably. Um, but, Charlie, who did you vote for, or who would you vote for, and uh, and, and why? Um, were I to vote, and, in fact, I did vote, because it's important, um, I voted for El Capitano, for me. Um I think, not not this isn't why, 100th appearance, um, so under under pressure, captain in the side, big crowd, um, second goal to make things comfortable in front of a packed LSV. Mm. Um, she also assisted two of them from her set pieces. I think she created all sorts of other goal scoring opportunities throughout the game. I think she was joint most for interceptions or tackles made, so she was doing her job all over the pitch for me um so i went for her i think i think it was it was close with maya but just because there wasn't much defensively to do katie just pipped it for me um because she had jobs to do all over the pitch and she was brilliant i thought go on whoever uh, wants to go next day, you two. I, I did vote and through this whole show tonight i was saying Zelly was brilliant. Zelly was this. However, I voted for Latisse um, for the one reason: two goals on her debut, her forward passing. You can't look past that. And I know it was Zelly's hundredth appearance, but I think we kind of expect it from Katie now. I think yesterday we all kind of. I mean, I know I stood there and I, I saw Latisse doing what she was doing, and the two goals and and. Everything that I just summed up. So for me, it, it was it was hard, but Latisse just took it. I think Maya was definitely taking Latisse. That's for sure. She was definitely doing that uh, quite a lot. <laughs> I'm acting, to be honest with you, <laughs> um, I thought she was brilliant. But I said it to you all on the way out, and yeah, it's, personally. I would have given it to Katie personally um, <clears throat> because she had a goal and two assists. Uh, whereas Maya Mayer had, um, you know, two goals, but no assists. Um, I think it's often the dumb thing to give the player of the match award to the person who's scored the most goals. Honestly, it could be either of them. And I don't think you can be too, too upset um, if either of them got them because they were both integral to the result as it ended. But I do feel 100% that for me it would have been would have been Katie if it had been down to me. But it's not down to me. So And I didn't vote because my phone's in, in my room charging. So Not that it made a difference. I'm sure you've rigged it somehow, Connor. <laughs> How is it that Mary Earps won it? Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... Uh... <laughs> I'm not, I'm not even going to get into that whole rig thing. I'm actually glad just on the predictions league that some of the scores for me didn't come into. I was a little bit worried that I was going to be top of the league because I thought then everyone's going to come with me and say I'm rigging it. So I'm actually glad I'm not <laughs> off the back of that. But we'll come to that in a second. Just get to some of these comments. Uh, Lanzar saying Maya, uh, two goals control the game from centre back. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that one. Um, John as well mentioned Zellum there going for Maya. That's where my thinking is. I think I would have. It's a tough one between Katie and Maya. I. The reason why I throw Honor's name in there as well is just because I think Honor is just to me is the best player in our team. Just technically, I think you know you look at it physically, never stops running defensively, always pretty solid across the. But I think everything about Honor is just so so good. So I think uh, yeah, 
I think mm. I'll have to go with Letitia just because it was her debut, you know, from centre back, two goals, controlled the game, as, as somebody said before as well. Um, in regards to this comment, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, like I said, tweeted it yesterday, you know, Zellum gave her a good little send off, scoring in the 14th minute in honour of Jackie leaving, obviously. So uh, there was that. But uh, no, I wouldn't read too much into what Jackie's agents come out and said either. Agents are there to. to do the best by their players, so uh, I wouldn't look at that. We've won 4-0. It was typical. So I said this, I think I was saying to John and Andrew on the way back, it's typical that that all came out after we just won a game. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I wouldn't look at him. It's that. She's not a United player anymore. Doesn't matter. Um, right, we shall look to uh, to wrap it up there. Before, we are going to play you a little bit of a a, a preview, I guess, into something, a, a video we do have coming out tomorrow. But before we do that, um, Mark, I just wanted to ask you, next yes. Sunday, is there any, I'm assuming there's a bus travel down to West Ham, is there any space for that left? Is, is yeah, people there's still space. yeah, there's still space on it. If you want to book on, uh, just go to www.oneclubunitedtravel, uh, one whatever it is, and get on the bus to West Ham. It's leaving at a very reasonable half past nine. I mean, that's, you know, I can have a lie-in on a Sunday. I mean, it's unheard of. Um, yeah, there's still space on the coach down to, to Dagenham uh, next Sunday. So, yeah, uh, Connor, I'm sure, will put a link in for the travel website to book on. And, yeah. Hope no, to see you there. Yeah. yeah, I'll drop that in the comments. You'll see most of us there. I should be there. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, but, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll be see. There. We're parking in somebody's drive, as far as I understand it. This could be fun. Indeed. Another one of, uh, another one of Charlie's new mates. <laughs> So I just definitely. I just find an empty drive. It's fine as keepers, Love isn't it. it? Straight in. Uh, and that's in reference to the bus, not Charlie's uh not Charlie's driving <laughs> on that one. Um so yeah, ch check that out if you are looking to go to West Ham and you're wondering how to get there, because it is a tough ground to, to get to and park at, as we found last year. So um but coach travel is better. Both you and I got into the car park. We were the only two that did. No, 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 no. Ben and I did. Oh, you did as well. Okay. Wait, so, so Charlie's going on. It didn't, by the looks of it. Yeah, because Ben and I arrived. For, what do we arrive four hours before kickoff? There was no one in the ground. <laughs> I need, I nearly got in at the where was? Is it Warsaw where Villa were playing somewhere grotty like that? Yeah, you parked next I, to well, me. I pulled, I pulled in there at first, and this wound my window down in my little sweet little uh, Vauxhall Polo, and this woman went, "Oh, here with the players," and I thought, <laughs> "I don't think they're coming in their kit, do they?" Yeah. No. Uh, but I could have got in, I think. I think someone ended up part next to Carla Ward. I can't remember who that was. Bizarre. <laughs> Dear me. Charlie has no Carla. That was it. I've got to say, the last 10 minutes of this show has been savage. <laughs> like one of those been... comedy central posts. Um, I'm just going to play this video because <laughs> we'll be back in about 90 seconds and I'll shout out what's happening next week. But I thought I'd just play this video. I'll stick the, the thing on Twitter in a second. It's something a little bit different for the channel. We're going to be doing this at every game um, this season. Um, just something a little bit different. You get to see a different side of us. We thought after the watch-alongs that we'd, we'd take you with us to games as well. So uh, here's a little 90-second, I guess, clip of, of, of what to expect for that. Back to all for United WFC. We're finally back at LSV. First game of the season. First, well, first WSL game of the season. My score predictions are 3 1 to United. Come on, Reds. Come on, United. John here, then. Just going to leave for Village for the first game of the season. United's good in. There's Reading with me. Sun's out. It's going to be a good day. And we are. Yeah. Mama. So here we are, we just arrived at LSV, already looking a bit busier than it normally would at this time. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
that'll be out at some point tomorrow. Uh, I'm not entirely sure yet when uh, we'll uh, we'll plan it around state events <laughs> that's happening in the country tomorrow. It'll be some point in the afternoon, so uh, make sure you check that out. There'll be more of these. Oh, really the missing your voice, well. either, mate. What was that? They needed your voice. You're like the cinema guy. <laughs> this season, only in Lee Sports Village, <laughs> eleven women. <laughs> We'll aim to reach the top of the mountain. I won't be doing that, but you will see, uh, obviously, what we're like. Obviously, you know, a little bit more uh, uh, games and all these kinds of things as well. You might actually see, I'm going to get this into a video at some point. Shane gave me an idea yesterday. Um, you're going to see me eating a burger, burger with a knife and fork at some point across the season. I'm going to make sure that makes it into one of these vlogs. Because <laughs> why, why not? Why would you do that? You, you're going to see all kinds of things in these uh... <laughs> Everything's gone back to this tonight. I think that's been the that's been the, that's been the theme of the. Oh crikey! Um, Can I? Just, yes. uh, I have to say though, Charlie, when in that preview, what were you looking at? You look proper like what's going on around here? Um, I was inspecting all of the cars around me. Ah. I was like, oh, it's busier. Absolutely. Okay. It goes with I was what trying you said, to look like serious. I'm, oh, I'm glad you showed us that white van. I'm glad you took a really long video of just a white van, Barry. <laughs> Deb's thinking she was looking for her. I don't know. There's like some weird fatal attraction going on here now. <laughs> Mickey, you've stolen the show with that. That's a fantastic comment. Um, but yeah, you'll I'm going to see how many players... How many, I'm, I'm going to do this season, see how many of the players I can get to call me yeah. mate, even if it's me saying mate an uncomfortable amount of times to them. Just have to say it back. That's what I'm going to do. It's worth it. And I have to say, she did find her mates because we were there and she knew oh. exactly where we were because I told her where to be. So, yes, she did. <laughs> It's only because he wants a lift next weekend. <laughs> well, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> say so. But yes, oh, that... Marty's coming just as we're finishing. Oh, oh what a shame. We will. Is Marty... You are okay, Marty. <laughs> make sure you make sure you rewind it and uh, and, and watch all of this back. Um, like I said, that'll be out tomorrow. We're going to do a lot of these over the course of the season, just to give you a you know people enjoyed the watch long. You see a different side of us. You will see kind of what we're like at. at you know, a little bit of games and, and all kinds of things from a range of contributors and, and other people as well. Um, we will be back at some point during the week. I'm not entirely sure yet. It might be Wednesday or Thursday. Um, on top of that, Barry will be back next Friday. And also, we have a returning guest in Benny next Saturday. So make sure you keep an eye out for that as well. Because uh, not been on the channel for a few months now. So it's uh, that's a big one to come back for, which we preview in West Ham next week as well. Um there was a comment I wanted to come back to talking about the badges as well and the hats as well. There's quite a lot of uh, supporters club hats floating around at the uh, at the weekend. I don't know what the price is, so I can't shout them out, unfortunately. Badges. We're marketing it. We've got the marketing geniuses on our side right now. So the so the beanie hats, it's eight pound <laughs> each or two for fifteen. Um, the badges, when we get them, they are on order. But we've also ordered. Um, all new player badges for this season. So we're going to have two in Cara, Nikita Paris, Adriana Leon, Garcia, Maya, Clinton. Uh, we've got them all. I'm actually going to have to put a new order in just for Charlie now for Rachel Williams badges. Um, and we'll just yeah. one for free. It's fine. We haven't got any. We haven't <laughs> ordered any. <laughs> Tip me. Um. We were. I was ruthless when I because we're going to think about you're going to think about which players are going to sell. And with, with all honesty, with all the negative press she got when she signed for us, was anyone really going to buy a Rachel Williams badge? And it sounds well, really hard. Now. But now I think we might have to because I think Charlie will buy more. It's my birthday soon. If you're interested, if there you we go. We can all buy. Char That's what we should buy, Charlie: a Rachel Williams United shirt, and get her to sign it. That bright yellow one. The bright yellow one. She doesn't want Williams on the back. She just wants, you know, like whatever her number's going to be and then mate along the top. <laughs> yes. Mate. <laughs> 21. 
this is going to be rumbling on all seas. I can see this. Uh, just an M. <laughs> just an M. Just an M at the top, and the number eight. Number eight. Yes, two. mate. Great idea. Um, 8th of October, John, if you're asking. Yeah, no, no need to write it down, though. Um, but it's international break, then, isn't it? You know, yeah, it's disappointing, that, really. So. Oh, that's a shame. I think... Anyway, well, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I don't even know what this show's turned into. Um, we're wrapping up there. Make sure you're following all of these legends on Twitter. So keep an eye on the Twitter for uh, tomorrow. Oh, I knew there was something I was missing. Predictions League. The table will come out tomorrow. I'm putting barriers, uh, putting pressure on Barrier to update the t- update the points uh, this afternoon. Well, have you know, I, I did the first two quite I nicely. Know, I know you did. I will just shout out one person, though. Uh, Maria, uh, I believe she's called, a Crystal Palace fan who actually got the Liverpool-Chelsea score correct today. The only person. There was two people that predicted Liverpool win, but she was the only one that got a lift. So someone check out what she's uh, she's doing. Everyone else went for a Chelsea win. So uh, that was quite interesting. Um, I think someone else got the... um, the city score as well earlier as well. Only one person got that, so fair play to them. Oh no, they didn't. Sorry, nobody nobody went for a Villa win. So uh, ah. make sure you keep an eye on the Twitter tomorrow for the uh, updated league table. Um, I think there's going to be quite a few people at kind of joint top, but uh, we'll keep an eye out for that and everything else as well. All the links and stuff to the sports club will be in the description as well as the as the travel as well. Make sure you like in the video and subscribe if you're new around here. And we'll see you guys very soon. Yeah! Yeah!